What is a cross section? Well, imagine this sphere right here. Using this sphere, we can, with a knife, cut down through part of this sphere. Now, imagine we're cutting out an infinitely small sliver of this sphere. Now, if you were to cut out a sliver at this particular junction of the sphere, what would it look like? Well, if you open it up, it would look like a circle. A circle whose radius is from this point right here up to the top. So let's make this circle a bit smaller to show that that is the radius right there. And so this would be the full-on view of this particular cross-section of that sphere. Now we can even create this sphere by creating an infinite sum of cross-sections. If I were to take a bunch of circles of different length and stack them together, it would create this sphere right here. So let's create a volume for a solid using these stacked up cross sections. And then we'll find the volume after using the integral. So consider a function f right here from a to b. The thought problem is this. We want to create a solid using this region right here from f to the x-axis between a and b as the base of the solid. The way that we're going to create our solid, of course, is by stacking, in this particular example, we're stacking squares, but we could stack any shape that we want. So here we're going to stack squares up where the side of the square goes from the x-axis to our function f. And of course, a square as the same height as it does base. So we're going to stack up all of these squares from A to B, and there's an infinite number of squares going from A to B. The question is, how could you find the volume of this new solid? Well, consider that we have an infinite number of areas, an infinite number of objects from A to B. How do you sum together an infinite number of areas? Well, with an integral. So we're going to take the integral from A to B of the area of each of these different cross sections right here. Now how can we find the area of each of these cross sections? Simple. In this particular example, we have squares. The area of a square is side squared. And of course the side is determined by the function value at that particular x value. So this would just be the function squared, since it's side squared. And that is how you would find the area of this solid. Now what happens if you want to have cross sections that are perpendicular to the y-axis? Well, if you want to have cross sections perpendicular to the y-axis, then you have to do everything in terms of y. So we're going to integrate from y equals a to y equals b. And we also have to create our functions in terms of y. So for example, if this equation right here was, for example, y equals the square root of x, which obviously it isn't, but let's say it is, then you would have to get x equals y squared and have your function in terms of y. But the point is that you are still taking an infinite sum, the integral from a to b, of the area of each of these cross sections. And that's the whole idea behind this. If you can find the area of the cross section in terms of your function, where your function is written in terms of the variable with respect to which you are different, uh, integrating with respect to, so here we are integrating with respect to y. Back here we are integrating with respect to x. If you can turn your function in terms of that variable and then represent your cross-sectional area as a function of that variable as well, you are good to go.